What is up, bros? Me, Josh, here. In today's video, we're going over the King George V. Now, this is the Tier 7 battleship for the brand new Royal Navy battleship line that just hit World of Warships recently. And if you haven't hit, touched this line, it's actually pretty freaking fun. I've been enjoying it. Uh, but the King George brings a completely different playstyle than you've really seen in battleships mainly as well as the tier 7 meta um, you may be seeing a little bit of similar play out of the sharn horse but in the past this kind of new meta that this line has brought to the world warships whether you like it or not um, is really the kind of powered by this line and the king george um, is the first one in my opinion on this line that really really hits the he meta um, in total and is a different style of play um but it can also be very, very effective, and I had a lot of fun. I think I averaged over the whatever the games I grinded through, I think I averaged easily over 100,000 damage on all the battles. So this thing is can be an absolute beast and can deal a ton of damage. Um, let's dive into the ship really quick, though, and we'll get into some gameplay in a little bit. So hit points, 60,500. That's pretty freaking competitive for this tier. Now, keep in mind, you are pretty light on armor. A lot of the armor on this is very, very thin. Um, best part is you don't get sitted a lot, but you are very, very fragile for kind of going in and brawn. You're going to take pretty big uh, hits, especially in the front, um, where there's very little armor. Um, and a lot of it, I mean, you have some massive armor on the sides, but when it comes to the front and the rear, you are going to be pretty limited on how much armor so you can't really bow tank like you could in other ships um so just kind of keep that in mind when you are actually playing this ship um you are very fragile so you play this more of a cruiser this is kind of the first one in this line um that you play more of a cruiser quote unquote um you'll see a lot more as like the conqueror and the lion the tier 9 and the tier 10 um ships as uh um you almost play them more like an he flinging cruiser uh the conqueror of course getting the mega Zao title uh torpedo protection 24 percent now the the best part i guess about this ship um is you aren't going to be super super close because you're not going to be brawling too much because you're playing it a little different than most battleships um the downside is though if you do take aerial attacks from a cv although your aa is pretty decent you are going to take some pretty big damage from those cvs so you are susceptible to that so be very very aware of where the cv is and um that's why i kind of spec this thing out for a little bit of extra aa to give me as much help as possible uh Main armament. This is kind of interesting because it's a four-two-four. As you can see, the two in the middle. You have you have two quads, which is pretty nuts. Um, but you do have this random kind of uh, a two-barrel gun, which is actually pretty nice. Though so you are pumping out ten shells, and the thing about this is, if you look at the guns, um, you're actually going to be pumping out um, an insane amount of HE damage. With 6100 as well as a 40 6100 alpha damage for the he as well as 41 percent fire chance so 10 shells going out there were games that literally felt like i was getting a fire every salvo and with a 25 second reload uh very fast reload <clears throat> lots of he shells going out lots of fires lots of damage um not to say that the ap is bad or anything like that but this line and this ship really really does it as well just being an he flinger if you literally only load he uh he ammo the entire time you're going to be successful you're going to do damage um but if you do find those spots that are right to hit with ap which i'll show you in this in this upcoming game um you can be very very effective with both and can do a ton of damage with both types of ammo um but he is really the all-star on this line and it, it shows really with this ship 18.1 um uh, main battery range, which is pretty competitive. Uh, this line doesn't seem to have, really have the longest range, but it does have competitive range. It does kind of get annoying when things are kind of starting to outrange you a little bit, but all in all, 18.1 is very, very competitive and even up tiers pretty well. So, uh, secondary batteries, they're all right. You're not really going to spec too much into it, but, um, it does help. Let's say if you are starting to push maybe late game and kind of do a little extra damage against destroyers or something like that are trying to push you. AA. Now, the AA is pretty solid. I spec this thing out a little bit extra with the AA module. Now, this is without, of course, an AFT captain. There's no captain on this right now because I moved him on to the Monarch, which is the tier 8. Um, but you can get out to about 6 and some change range, and the AA is actually pretty solid with the uh, AA rating of 60-something, I think, with AFT. Now, I didn't spec into BFT or manual or something like that, but you could actually do pretty well. It's not Sean Horse or Organized now level, but it, you are going to do pretty solid and shoot down some planes, um, especially since you're relatively fast at a max speed of almost 30 knots on this thing. So pretty solid, pretty maneuverable, not not too crazy, um, but you do have some speed. And the best part about this line, and this is without, of course, a captain in it, the detectability gets really, really low um, on this line. So you're going to get down about 13-something I mean, compared to, let's say, like the Colorado. 
um, which is going to be much farther, kilometers farther. So if you're going like against a Colorado or a Nagato, you have the ability to just kind of go in and out of detection and um, light them on fire and then run, light them on fire and then run. Um, so this thing is super, super, super effective at just being this annoying battleship, lighting things on fire, forcing them to repair, um, going dark. And because, you know, you have a tw about a 25 second reload. You do have a 25 second reload on this. So lighting them on fire, going dark, and then popping up for your next salvo. They're going to be out of the repair. And it is not uncommon to get one, two fires, and sometimes three fires on salvos. I, 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 there's a few times where I got three fires in one salvo, and it was after repair. What are you supposed to do against that? And of course, on top of this, it is a roll navy battleship, so you do get an insane heal. So modules, this is what I run on it. Um, pretty simple since there's only four slots. Main armament mod one. You don't want to lose those main battery guns. You want to be pumping out as much damage as possible. Um, AA mod, I'm thinking this is pretty solid, or pretty standard for this entire line. Um, since you are uh, so low on torpedo protection on, I think, this almost entire line, um, it's good to shoot down those extra planes that are going to be kind of picking on you. So anything really helps. I don't think you're going to get much out of secondaries. Aiming system is, is eh, I find this line relatively accurate. If you want that 7% extra, you can go for that by all means um, to help out with a little bit of secondary too. But I think AA will pay off. Um, taking one less tort from a plane or a flooding or something like that is always massive. And just helping your team out by shooting extra planes. Um, damage control system mod 1. I think this is pretty solid. Um, be on fire as less as little as possible. Same with flooding if you can maybe survive. Um, because these things are fragile. So if you are taking big fire damage or taking something else, you can help um by just that little extra percent it's not a lot but it doesn't hurt and then um i actually went with this now steering gears is also something uh um that you could also go with but there's been so much he um in this game i've started to run damage control system mod 2 i'm kind of okay with it because um there's been so much kind of aa and i haven't seen too many cvs consistently in q now since the yamamoto campaign has changed um, so I have been running this a little bit since there is so much HE spam, um, but I would either take that or steering gears. I think those are both pretty solid. So let's dive into some gameplay. I'll show you guys how I played this ship and then when HE and AP are the right times to choose the end. So here we are actually in game with the King George and I were actually on fault line and luckily got top tiered, um, which is pretty nice. I feel like, uh, six and seven, which were getting picked on for a long time until this line came out, um, getting bottom tiered a lot. Um, I feel like tier six and tier seven are pretty solid right now because there's so many people playing kind of those mid tiers again because of these battleships. I mean, you have Iron Dukes, King George, um, Nelsons, all kind of in queues. So it is kind of balancing out those uh, uh, that matchmaking again. And on fault line, especially even without a even without a cap here, I don't like going this side. But since the King George is pretty freaking fast at almost 30 knots. You do have the ability, it's kind of like a Sharn Horse, right? Where the Sharn Horse can eye is now both relatively quick and can kind of um, get in and out, play it like a cruiser, get in and, and actually get out of the kind of the far away caps. So um, my destroyer wanted to go this way, so I figured why the hell not? Let's just go this way and defend it, and then maybe we'll snag a couple kills. Um, normally I never play this map this way because if there is a if there is a cap. Um, or if there is uh, something like that, then it will draw some potential players that way. But since um, it was no cap, I figured, no, our DD's like, hey, I'll roll that way. And, I, and then I kind of hugged the middle of that. And if I spotted something, I would then go for it that way. And then uh, I didn't, you know, if there was anything spotted, then I would continue towards the middle. But as you can see, I had HE loaded um, right away. Now, this thing, I would say HE is the main ammo. You're going to do the majority of your damage with HE damage. But I'm still a battleship, you know. People saying doing all, all these things with uh, AP only damage on some of these battleships. They're still battleships. They can still absolutely dunk on cruisers, absolutely dunk on battleships. Um, it's still a battleship. It's still a battleship. So you can still absolutely destroy these guys. And so I saw Fiji, which is basically made of paper. And I figured, hey, I can uh, maybe knock them out a little bit. And um, my destroyer is like, hey, can you please take out this guy? I think that's a little bit behind. I'm not sure. No, oh, never mind. There's, there's one. So it is a Fiji. We are able to knock out some decent damage. And I think I need to be a little careful. I've been doing this a lot recently where I've been running to freaking islands. So I gotta pay more attention, uh, especially to my mini map. But um, Fiji hanging out, he he, he uh, kind of got scared and, and panic smoked a little bit, but we'll just help him out, send him back to port. He can think about what he did and um, 
think about it next time and and, and maybe play so two salvos right there he wouldn't have done that damage um but ap definitely did so 31k right off the bat first blood we'll take that into king george he is a great ammo but guys remember these things have ap use it in the right situations you don't need to stick with he only um remember that's the model of these battleships they are still freaking battleships so um we cleared that out luckily i'm a relatively quick battleship like if i was a colorado i probably would have never gone this way because you're so freaking slow and i continued on since there wasn't really anything so my thought process if you can see the map right now my thought process was potentially we go uh, around and maybe flank these guys but i didn't know there was three dds only one had been spotted um so i didn't know where two of them were there's the other one right there just currently spotted so i didn't know where the other one was and um my teammates right here so we have a lot of guys right here not really being able to do too much because the majority of teams are rolling this way. Those guys are getting picked on. They just lost one to an Atlanta. So I was debating going this way, but I needed to start getting some pressure maybe on this push, roll back if I needed to, or just start pushing the middle, which I think is probably the better idea in the long run, and uh, really just start pumping out some damage on these guys. And then if they start pushing up, majority of the time, I don't know why, this path is very, very, very attractive to most people. I do not know why people like to filter through. This is a much safer route. You have more cover, but people love going through this area and then curling up. I don't know why. Um, so I figured I could either one, roll up if they really start pushing that, or to get around this corner and then start putting pressure on the middle. As you can see, I'm starting to turn right now. So one, be aggressive. We have the advantage. We've killed two of their cruisers, uh, Fiji and Omaha. We've lost the Farragut, which sucks, but it's not the worst. And then if we kill this Akatsuki, we're in a really good spot. So that was my kind of thought process on where they were. They hadn't really gotten too much pressure extra on this. And I honestly, as you can see, I switched to HE right here. I honestly thought we lost our Shira right here. They are in an absolute knife fight. And I thought we were going to get a trade or just lose our guy. I thought it was going to be a ram. But he snagged him with the torp, um, which was awesome. And then the Akatsuki completely wrecked. And then I got stole. This kill got stolen from me from my own teammate. That's all right. He's down. He took a little to no damage. Um, so what turned uh, from a potential trade ended up being a just win for us. So that's pretty awesome. Although he stole that kill. Jerk. Kick him, on, kick him out of the division. But um, yeah, right now we're in a really good position. We've killed all the guys on this side. We've actually gotten th the three kills on this side were from us. And um, we're amazed that our div mate is alive. So with this, I think Expert Loader is actually going to be a decent little ammo because there are so many times where you're switching back and forth where I had HE loaded and I was like, man, I wish I had AP loaded. Or if I had AP loaded, I wish I had HE loaded. Or vice versa. So I think Expert Marksmanship is going to... Or Expert Marksmanship. Uh, expert Loader, which I tend to never run on anything. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, is going to be pretty solid for this. It's going to cut the reload time from switching ammos pretty quickly. Because it's most of the time it's going to be worth it. Um, because a lot of the times when you have a good broadside, it's a small window to shoot at. So you don't have, even at 25 second reload, don't have that, that time, that window to actually get it done. And, um, as you can see, I'm switching back and forth a lot because I just don't know where ships are and I want to start pumping out damage. Um, and as you can see, uh, we got, we got a guy in chat giving us crap and we have all the kills so far. We have literally all the kills, um, the three guys we've lost have actually been on that side. So they need our help. So we are kind of rolling. But um, literally, we've taken out <laughs> our div, I think. Yeah, our div has all the kills right now, which has been the entire east side. So um, uh, ex exactly, exactly. Whatever. Game chat's game chat. But anyways, um, what's really good, though, is this kind of ship in this situation. If I had only AP on that... Um, even if I was in, let's say, a Colorado or a Nagato, not much damage, if any damage, would come out of that. Um, maybe some pens here and there, but that's when the HE really, really shines. You snag a fire. Of course, we didn't on that one um, when I'm talking about it, but that's when this kind of ship can shine. I mean, already we're ready for the next one. And what I love to do, and if you guys didn't see my Nelson review, which is, I'll put a link down below, which is the Tier 7 Premium, which is actually just off to our, our left side, um, is I like to put a salvo on one thing, start a fire if I can. Let's see Iron Duke's on fire right now. Either one, he's going to repair that, or two, let that burn. And the really easy thing to do is I'm watching my damage right now, so we instantly put that out. So one, I can focus on this guy. 
um, that's the best part about these kinds of ships is if you do shoot and then you they put a fire out the next time you are going to be able to shoot you're going to be able to start a fire because the repair window is going to be down just because of the repair time um the repair window compared to the reload so i knew that guy didn't have repair so if i see anybody without a repair i am absolutely focusing on with he and that's a sticky fire right there and i think I'll, i would probably put one more shot at him i don't know if i do or can get the shot around um but uh that's that's what this line's about forcing that's what mainly a lot of he uh cruisers or battleships are about getting that fire out spreading it around forcing those repairs and then moving on to the next one same thing rinse and repeat so getting those fires i mean two salvos two fires i'll take that all day long we're up to fifty thousand damage and that one that we know on the iron duke is going to keep burning so pretty freaking solid now i know that there was two cruisers over here i think with one more destroyer i don't exactly remember where the destroyer is um is something we need to work on so i'm switching ap they're cruisers i'm a battleship that's my job is to help take off these guys i mean no one's i think in atlanta and the ones in algiri i think is what we're going on and apparently this atlanta has been dunking on our team so and watch the rep watch the repairs that's what you can do watch a little gray bar see how massive that gray bar is that's the royal navy that's the secret sauce of the royal <laughs> navy battleships is being able to just repair all kinds of damage and that dude got i think raced by god that that salvo went there i felt like that should have been uh a little bit better than that so i got a little unlucky and um i just wanted to hang on to my repair just a little bit to see if i get to some torpits but um since he's kind of hiding around i'm gonna put some shots on that now geary now i did just repair so it's kind of brutal for me since he is an he spammer he's not putting any shots on me yet which is nice he's putting on the miyoko which honestly is giving him no angle so he's gonna do little to no damage to him and it's no damage on me so nice little 10k salvo on him and really we know that once i go topside um and i think i, I try to austin power this and just kind of chill here so uh kind of sucks for me but i know I'm, I'm safe from his torps which are i think nine kilometers on the algeria it's been so long since i played the ship um but hopefully take him out and we can kind of work on this our nelson's getting rocked in the middle and um all I have to do is be, is be aware of where this Atlanta is. I want to see the Farragut before he tours me. So um, that's not that big of a deal. And we have a plane uh, coming up soon. So no no real big thing. So we lost our Nelsons. We're starting to lose some uh, momentum. But if you see where all of their ships are, they're all way south. Kind of not doing anything. And what do we have south? We have a Shiretsu just pumping torps into them. So we're doing all right although we're now tied the scoreboard's tied uh ship ship deaths are tied we're doing absolutely fine so as you can see right here i am switching back and forth between ap all the time i'm not sticking with one i'm not you know he only i'm not doing that if it's the right situation i'm using ap and if it's the right situation i'm using he so you see me switch ammo on these ships a lot and that's what you should be doing too um these ships benefit from being he spammers because they're just easy to play they really really are especially this one this one was such an easy grind and this was even my mo like my biggest damage game we had a bunch of really really good damage games in this thing you know um 200k plus games and it just so happened to be that a lot of a lot of the uh our our big damage games were on losses which the 200 to the two 200k uh, games i had in the ship we're on losses which kind of sucks but um this thing consistently pumped out damage like i said i think i had over i think i had about 104k average damage um which i think is like really close to where like my hindenburg is in this ship it's just a damage dealing machine and you're gonna profit from just doing i mean if you just shot he you're gonna do good damage you will um but knowing when and where to shoot ap in this line is where really good players and uh, and smart players are going to profit like that was probably a better ap salvo um potentially get him in a citadel um knowing the right times to shoot he and ap and when you should shoot he and ap is where this line is going to really 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 shine and uh um because you know ap is you're, you're still a battleship that's the thing so and of course, we get one little incapacitation there. We have a Miyoko and a, and a Cleveland. Now, I was getting a little worried here because our Cleveland took so long to kill this guy. I was kind of surprised 
Um, the Miyoko went over there to help him. And then Atlanta had been playing very, very good this whole game. So, like, Cleveland was guaranteed dead. He's, he basically sat broadside to that guy. And uh, our Miyoko didn't really have too much either, too much life. So, um, I knew we were going to have to kind of go against him. Down he was going to go. Our Miyoko was just launching Torps. Um, and I'm kind of, like, in a weird spot. We have three low-life cruisers pushing into this guy. Um that's that's been playing very well he's in a very Atlant a pro atlanta spot right now so um this is another situation where i i had the wrong ammo loaded and didn't you know didn't get rewarded for it so he's gonna rock back out of that actually so not much is gonna come from that i think i hit him a couple times we did light him on fire which is nice force the force the repair on him and he is a little bit lower on life does he not have a repair i think he burns out a little bit um but our meal um is getting kind of Plunked on by this guy. The collar or the Cleveland's going really low. Or I think our Ma, or I think our Miyoko ends up pushing him a little bit. Um, so we're doing okay in this spot, but we're not doing insanely well. But I figured since what they had left, I would be able to kind of I could probably win this by myself. Their big damage ship is the King George. He's really, really low. It's the same ship as I am. I could potentially one salvo this guy, even if the Miyoko gets a trade. That's awesome. And then two Iron Dukes, which, although they can hit me very hard because they are battleships, um, I figured I could probably burn them down and just kite them to death. We have about five minutes, so um, even with their uh, health pools and how much damage I could potentially put out, I think it was pretty doable, as long as I didn't have a repair. But I did have to get some good RNG, um, unlike that salvo. So the Atlanta gets the Kraken because people single fouled into there. And um, I figured I'd put some pressure on this guy, though work on this Iron Duke and kind of get into a good spot where I can focus on all three and then potentially just get this game in the bag with four and a half minutes. We actually do need one more kill. Um, and I think the uh, meal, no, it's just, it's just, yeah, the meal's still in game, but um, like right there, that probably would have been a better a AP salvo. But in this situation, um, you need to kind of be aware of what you're trying to do. What I was trying to do is damage multiple parties at one time and i didn't know if potentially since what was shooting at these guys he may have not had a, may have not had a repair so i basically go he the rest of this game and really there we go so now he's not gonna have a shot on me because of this island that's what i wanted to do i wanted to get fires on him because i'm gonna have this environment to chase to uh um protect me basically and i wanted to help kill this guy um i would assume he would have no repair because he's gonna get picked on by shira and a bunch of other ships so um, take this guy out, and then it's basically me versus two guys that are relatively low, one of which is an Atlanta. Now, I had to be very, very careful because the Atlanta does have torpedoes. Yes, it does. Um, they're not very far, not very long, and um, but they do have uh, torpedoes, and I didn't need to get absolutely demolished by this guy. Also, if you're broadside to him, you can get absolutely stomped. So, um, he's going to go down. We're up to, what, 90, almost 96k damage. And, of course, I whiff. I just completely... I'm surprised this Atlanta moved here. Um, he had played so well. I'm surprised he just didn't sit there and just wait to potentially get the trade. Um, back turrets on that guy. That's a deadly fire regardless. I'm surprised this Atlanta moved from his spot. It didn't seem like a play that that guy would have done since of, because of how he played the entire game. He played this really good kind of standard Atlanta style of play where he would just basically post up and not worry about anything. So down he goes, he killed him, killed the other Iron Duke. I'm not on fire anymore. And this is something that I was a little scared of. Um, now this this Iron Duke, although he uh, he's two tiers lower than me, and I could have probably just gone for the ram. That would have gone on in a spectacular fashion, but you got to keep that survival rate up. And... Um, this, I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go. I didn't know if he was going to push. didn't know what he was going to do. And as you can see, I went AP here this because it's the right thing to do. And I took a nice little 8K salvo, which kind of sucked for me. We traded basically damage for damage, and he got a fire on me with the secondaries. But the right thing to do is to shoot AP. I mean, an HE salvo would have maybe set him on fire, but it would have done little to no damage probably at that range. So this is obviously just an AP situation, and this is when knowing the right ammo um, in the right spots is going to pay off. 
into a monster 15k salvo. There's no way an HD salvo would have done that. And there's the low kind of... I mean, he does tag me there a little bit. Um, but not too bad. I mean, of course, he's selling broadside. I'm not. But uh, he's going to give me this final little broadside. And he kind of just sat there for me. So it's kind of nice. I figured I might die here. But let's just AP right through that and get through it and show the King George what's up. But all in all, guys... Fun ship. Get out there and play it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.